Hi everyone, my name is Aran Kinsbonner. I'm happy to be uh, featured in the TestFlix event by Test Tribe. Uh, I'm a chief evangelist, a product manager, and author at Perfecto, which is a Perforce company. Over 20 years in the software development and testing, author of these three books. Uh, if you have them, I hope that you are enjoying them. Uh, the latest one is the Accelerating Software Quality. I'm also available on all social media, so feel free to follow me and engage with me during and also after this event. Uh, what I'm experiencing, and obviously uh, you are online are also, is a massive digital transformation that is happening over the past two or three years, uh, which aims to take mobile user experience, mobile application development to a whole new level. We are seeing the latest uh, Apple app clips that are using a subset of an application to serve the end user without him having to download uh, the native application from the App Store. Google just initiated the Android APKS, which is also a set of uh, small Android applications that are aimed to address specific users in specific geographies on specific smartphones and tablets uh, da downgrading or minimizing the overall application size and uh, obviously boosting the performance, uh, allowing gradual exposure of features to specific countries and uh, subset of devices. With that in mind, progressive web is uh, in a much, much more mature stage than APKS and app clips. Progressive web are a superset of a responsive web application with a lot of mobile-like capabilities, offline caching, push notifications, uh, access to different sensors of the mobile device. Uh, what you can see on the screen is the Guardian uh, newsletter, the digital newsletter in the UK, that once he is losing uh, or the end user is losing internet connectivity, is being served by a crossword or other content. So he is not really living the, the, the web experience and he has this user continuity on the browser. The advantages of a progressive web is that it works obviously for any user like a responsive web, but it has uh, connectivity independence through the offline caching abilities. It is able to register for push notifications like a mobile native app would do. Uh, it doesn't need to go through the uh, Apple App Store or the Google Play. The way you install it is simple, uh, simply going through the homepage. Think about eBay.com, Instagram.com, or Twitter. You go to the Twitter.com from your iOS device on a Safari browser. You click head to home screen, and then you have a linkable application installed on your device without the need to download it from any app store. It also, uh, since it's being served by the different uh, desktop browser vendors like Google, Apple, and Microsoft, as well as Mozilla, it's search or SEO friendly. It's very, very uh, easy to use, and it feels like an app. To transition to a progressive web, a developer or developer team needs to develop a manifest.json, which is the profile of the website or the PWA application. And most important, it needs to develop a service worker, which is a JavaScript proxy file, which handles all of the uh, access to the sensors of the mobile phone, the offline caching, the notifications, and many other engagements. You can see here in this short code snippet, how a service worker JavaScript code will register for push notifications. On the other hand, you will see how a manifest.json file uh, kind of describes the PWA application, <coughs> including uh, which starting URL, once you click on the icon that you installed on your mobile device, which is the home screen uh, that you will get to, as well as some other icons and uh, design related configurations. Once implemented, a PWA can be very powerful. It, in, it increases the engagement, it reduces the application size, it boosts the overall performance. You can go to pwastats.com and learn about many leading uh, uh, brands like Trivago and uh, you know the Best Western and how they engage uh, much better with their end users after moving to a progressive web implementation. Again, how you would install a PWA, you would go to twitter.com, instagram.com, or other um, PWA application. You will click from the menu on the head to home screen on iOS or on Android, and boom, 
you have the application installed on your smartphone or tablet, and then you can start working and engaging with the app like it was a native application. If you want to convert your existing website to a PWA, you have other services. Microsoft is providing one. You have the PWA Builder website that can get your website URL and convert it into a PWA application. How you would test PWA uh, applications? So, A, you need to understand where PWA technology is today. Today, it's still young and growing. There aren't really that many uh, good practices out there. There are the browser uh, set of requirements and uh, checklist which you can follow and get started with. You have my presentation now, and uh, you also need to have your developers understand the new or the sophistication uh, behind the architecture of a PWA, which is not really like any other website that you will see. Developers would need to improve their skill sets to manage the caching architecture, uh, working with open source and other uh, third party uh, services that the website is working. You need to understand uh, how your PWA will continue to work across all different devices, mobile, desktop, and other platforms, and how it would integrate with other third parties. This is kind of a preliminary checklist, if you like, uh, for developers and product managers uh, before jumping towards implementing a PWA. There are also uh, the web dev website that gives you a, a PWA checklist, 11 checklist uh, metrics, such as uh, the performance, the working uh, across all browsers, the responsiveness, the install, uh, installation, the offline caching, push notifications. Uh, the accessibility is also a key for progressive like any other website, working with any, any other input types and many more. If you want to compare PWA to responsive, so responsive needs to uh, work across all platforms, uh, visually perfect, work with uh, a great set of performance abilities, and also work across all the accessibility and other environment conditions because responsive is for mobile and web like PWA. PWA takes the previous six boxes and add the following ones the validation of the manifest file, the validation of the service workers, the validation of specific PWA capabilities like the offline caching, the push notifications, the cross-platform engagement, and how you update features and functionalities. Uh, the automation of PWA needs to be also thought because it's kind of a Selenium plus Appium uh, uh, skill set that you need to have because up until you install the PWA, you are engaging with a browser, so it's a Selenium script that gets you up until you install the PWA. Once you are within the app, this is an, a standard Appium test automation skill set that you need to automate the PWA. Obviously, it's recommended to go through the Google PWA checklist and see that you are compliant. So a summary to this short tech talk, feel free to engage with me after if you have more questions. You need to understand and work with the service workers. Use the Google Lighthouse. It has very strong debugging abilities for uh, both manifest service workers and other debugging abilities of the website. You need to understand that it's growing. You need to understand that iOS, Safari, uh, Google Chrome, and other browsers have different maturity levels of PWA support. So sometimes sensors on these browsers and capabilities won't be the same across different platforms. And obviously leverage whatever you have uh, gathered today around testing responsive web, Selenium, and mobile testing because PWA takes all of these things and combines them into a single app and obviously a testing strategy. I hope you enjoyed this short tech talk and feel free to ask any questions at uh, any given time. Thank you and uh, we'll be in touch over social media. Thank you.